What are the most effective ways of measuring your scoliosis? When patients are diagnosed with scoliosis, one thing they're always told is the size of their curve or the size of a measurement that's done either in a physical exam or in a spinal x-ray. And so why does we really want to measure scoliosis and understand the size of it? Well, scoliosis, first of all, is a, a natural sideways curvature of the spine. And it is normally associated with rotation, and the rotation is normally into the concavity of the scoliosis. We know from the spine from the front view should be completely straight. There should be no curves associated with it. It should be straight from the skull all the way down to the pelvis. However, from the side view, the spine should have normal curvatures. And these curvatures can be in the cervical and thoracic and lumbar spine, but these curves should be only visible from the side or the sagittal view. If we see any misalignment or any curvature from the front, we consider that to be abnormal. Now, one screening test that's actually done to determine if there's a possible curvature occurring from the front view will be something called Adam's Forward Bending Test. An Adam Forward Bending Test is a screening tool or an assessment tool that you can be done visually to see if there's any possible uh, scoliosis occurring in this person's uh, spine. Now, typically this is part of like a physical screening or a, a pediatrician examination or a school screening. And this is where a patient will kind of bend forward and they bend forward 90 degrees at their hips, trying to kind of reach towards their toes and they let their arms kind of hang and bend naturally and try to round their mid back. And normally what they're looking for is any type of um, rib um, deviation in, that, in the spine. However, you're really looking for anything. You wanna follow up and down the spine and see if there's any curvature that you visually see within the spine from the pelvis to the skull. You're looking for any asymmetry in the lumbar area. There's one, there's the lumbar side, there's one side pushed back more for, further than the other side. And then of course, you're looking at the ribs. Now normally this test, it's, most, it's easiest to see a thoracic deviation or a scoliosis is occurring in the mid back because that's when it truly creates a difference in the rib structure. However, you want to look at the entire spine, not just the thoracic area. So a lot of times lumbar curves can be missed during an Adams test if it's not done by somebody knowing that they should look through the entire spine. Very often, a tool called a scoli meter will be used with an Adams forward bending test. A scoli meter is like a level, and it's a device that you can actually, when the spine actually tilts, or when you tilt it this way, it has a little marker that actually moves and tells you the degree of tilt that's associated with it. And this, this ruler or this level can be placed where you see the biggest deviation, either in the ribs or in the lumbar, you place it right at that apex where you see the biggest deviation, and it gives you a measurement in terms of degrees. The scoli meter actually measures rotation something that we call angle of trunk rotation or ATR, or it measures rib arching. And the idea is that if we see a measurement at a certain size, that tells us that there could be a scoliosis occurring. That measurement is roughly about seven degrees. It's plus or minus a little bit, depending on what area of the spine that you're looking at, but roughly if we see a seven degree curvature, a seven degree tilt, we know that this requires further testing. Now understand that this is not foolproof. Seven degrees here doesn't mean that you have a seven degree scoliosis. It just means that there's something going on and it could be scoliosis. Sometimes if the curve is, doesn't have a tremendous amount of rotation, but just has more um, lateral bending associated with it, you may get a smaller measurement, but the curve could still be there. So again, it's only a test, only a tool. It doesn't mean if you have a negative scoli meter finding of like four degrees, that the person doesn't have scoliosis. It means that according to the scoli meter, it's not big enough to do something, something next, but you have to look at everything and associate history, other physical findings that are associated with a person's scoliosis. Normally positive scoli meter tests typically says, okay, we want to do an x-ray. And an x-ray is what we're normally doing x-rays for is to look at something called a Cobb angle. So what is a Cobb angle? A Cobb angle is a measurement for scoliosis. It is the orthopedic gold standard in measurement and diagnosis of scoliosis. And what it is, it's, some, it's a measurement or an annotation that's taken off an x-ray. And it's, it's the, the parameters of it are looking at anything that's 10 degrees or greater is considered to be a scoliosis in a person's patient, in, in this patient. Does that mean if somebody has nine and a half degrees, they don't have scoliosis? Well, officially by diagnosis, yes, but it mean the curve could be there, it just hasn't hit, hit the magnitude. 
we believe curves start off very small, a few degrees, and they progress from a few degrees into whatever they're gonna become. So small measurements don't mean they potentially can't become a problem, it just means it's not hit that diagnosis yet in where it could be called full-blown scoliosis. The way you measure a scoliosis is that you look at the apex of the curve, and then you go, uh, you pick the most tilted vertebra above, and you pick the most tilted vertebra below, and you draw lines off those, and you measure angles, 90 degree angles from there, and then these intersecting lines will give you an angle. The size of that angle will determine the size of that scoliosis, where these intersecting lines are in degrees. So curves between 10 degrees and 25 degrees are normally called a, a severity of mild. And mild means that the curve is too small, to consider surgery, but doesn't mean it can possibly be not causing problems or effects in that person with that scoliosis. Curves between 25 degrees and 40 to 45 degrees are considered moderate scoliosis, and there's a little bit of a range there. Some doctors will say 40, some doctors will say 45, some people will even go up to 50 in this moderate range. Once you break 40 to 50 degrees, they call this severe, and then I like to use a fourth category is when the degrees get over 80 degrees, that's what they call it, very severe. The largest curve I've ever seen actually in a growing child has been 155 degrees. So unfortunately, curves can become very severe, left untreated and left to progress. So this, um, the severity of this scoliosis is how we determine what type of treatment plan to do. So when we look at the measurements in the depression's ATR, and we look at the measurements associated on the Cobb angle or on the x-ray, and looking at what's happening, this is how we determine what a patient needs in terms of their treatment options. The reason why we just don't take x-rays on every single patient and we first do Adam's test is because Adam's test is an important screening, and it's a way of looking at whether a patient needs to have further testing. Now, unfortunately, a lot of times uh, our scoliosis screenings, especially the ones that were occurring in schools, weren't always happening. And not all states have mandatory scoliosis screenings. So I would recommend that you always check your children and have them bend forward and look to see if there's any type of deviation occurring. A positive Adams test will definitely lead to early detection, and early detection can definitely lead to a better outcome. The bigger curves become, the, the less likely we are to get a positive outcome with treatment. So we always like to treat curves smaller. And the smaller you treat a curve, the greater chance that you have a, a positive outcome. Even though when we deal with scoliosis, we don't ex there's no 100% guarantees when it comes to any type of treatment option. But we always know the younger the patient, the smaller the curve, the better the results. So we always wanna treat curves smaller as opposed to letting curves become bigger. As with any prog progressive treatment or progressive problem, Treating sooner is always better than treating later because smaller problems are almost always easier to treat than when they become so, uh, more severe. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, we definitely offer proactive treatment. We like to treat curves as soon as we find them, and we like to reduce curves. And since our treatment is conservative, it's not invasive, there's no screws or surgeries or anesthesia associated with it, we can treat curves very, very early in, in development and have a positive effect on the progressive nature of scoliosis over somebody's life. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.